Hello and welcome to a Temple Group initiative, the Temple Podcast, a series of talks between experts covering the Mauritian economy and businesses and also covering the legal, financial services, taxation, compliance, immigration and other such matters. Today's topic is the Mauritius Economic Outlook 2022. Being part of the global economic cycle, we will start with what's happening around the globe first. Obviously, the pandemic has created an unprecedented and uncertain situation the world over. Therefore, the IMF has been very careful in its projections for the world recovery, which is indeed slow and weak. They have also revised their projections from 4.9% to 4.4%. Aside from the pandemic itself, one of the reasons for the slow recovery is what is happening in China. In China, as we all know, there was and continues to be a real estate crisis because Evergrande, the largest real estate company in the world, has a debt of $300 billion plus and he's defaulting on its payments, creating a real estate bubble in China, but also in other parts of the world. China also has traditionally been the logistics and manufacturing hub of the world. And because of the pandemic, the entire supply chain has been affected. Closer home in South Africa, the pandemic has also created some problems. South Africa was already reeling with a difficult economic situation and the IMF has therefore revised the South African growth from 2.3% to 1.9%. Coming to Mauritius, numbers aren't that scary. Mauritius is obviously a smaller economy, but also the government and the businesses have taken care to make sure that the economy doesn't suffer as much as it could have. It is also true because the wage assistance scheme that was put in place from the government has helped a lot of the businesses stay afloat. The Mauritius forecast for 2021 was 3.9%, which was down 30 basis points. But this was only because of the very slow recovery in the tourism sector. All the other sectors have done rather well. The other problem for Mauritius was the import-export imbalance. The imports stand at 40% of the GDP, whereas the exports only total up to 26%. And this is a little bit worrying. Luckily though, the foreign direct investment has been on the rise. 2021 saw an increase of 19% over 2022. Of course, 2020 was a difficult year, but 2021 when compared to 2019 still had a 6.3% rise. The main sectors for Mauritius economic growth going forward remain tourism, real estate, sugar, tuna and textiles, financial services, ICT and BPO, and the biopharma and biosciences sectors. Tourism remains at the heart of the economic recovery in Mauritius. Uh, this is a country and a destination that prides itself with the name that it has made in the tourism market. And whilst the recovery has been slow, with all the vaccination measures in place and all the borders open now, we believe that the tourism will pick up in the next six to eight months. The other good thing about the hospitality sector in particular is that we haven't seen any foreclosures. The banks have been particularly supportive. There have been certain schemes from the government which have supported these high leveraged assets, but it has worked for the employers and the employees. And therefore, we believe that this is a long term cycle which will continue to bring benefits to whoever gets involved as an investor or as a business person. The only transaction that took place in this period was the sale of the Radisson Post La Paya. But this was something that was available in the market pre-COVID. Therefore, it is not to be blamed on the pandemic itself. This hotel has been sold to Brown Investments, a very large conglomerate of hospitality investments and also involved in other areas. And we are happy to welcome them to the island. Moving on to real estate, this is one of the best sectors right now. Over the years, the Mauritian economy and the state have transformed the sugar land into real estate. Uh, Mauritius obviously has a definite and a limited land mass, but we believe that like to like, 
Mauritian property still remains underpriced. A beachfront property in Mauritius is still very cheap compared to the same property in Cape Town or in Miami or any other parts of the world. Rental yields are good, 7% for residential, 8% for commercial. Uh, leveraging is not that difficult because land is put as collateral and there's a lot of interest both in the local side and in the uh, foreign side, both for consumption as well as for investment. So real estate is the sector to watch out for in our view. The next one is export led. We call it tuna textiles because these are the two main, man, main manufacturing export hubs of Mauritius. In this area, we have to know that this is a sector that requires a lot of labor. Labor is now becoming scarce in Mauritius because the Mauritius education and health system and the fact that Mauritians are bilingual has produced a lot of white collar executive workforce and they are very well employed in Mauritius and elsewhere, which therefore has led to a scarcity of blue collared workforce. Again, the government has recognized this and the import of blue collar workforce as well as any workforce actually is quite easy in Mauritius. Today we have over 40,000 blue collar workforce in the tuna and textile industry. In the blue collar side, as I said, there, were, there are 40,000 plus workers here. Uh, and this works really well because the Mauritian uh, human resource and employment rights are the same for locals as well as for foreigners. Next sector to watch out for is financial services, a sector that we belong to. This sector, by virtue of the many changes globally in legislation for taxes as well as for, uh, for jurisdiction rights, Mauritius has done rather well. We continue to attract a lot of investments, global headquartering and incorporations. Uh, we continue to remain an investment hub to emerging markets and we continue to retain our edge as an international financial center. And to the same is the arrival of some very big names in the likes of Sun and Okorian and there are more to follow. There will be further consolidation in the sector but all for very good reason as we believe that there will be more expertise and diversity of services and Mauritius will continue to set itself as an international financial center. Uh, this has to also be seen in the light of the global minimum tax that has been discussed at the level of OECD and now uh, also has the support of the US and it is our held view that global minimum tax will eventually be a reality across the globe and Mauritius already finds itself well positioned to kind of cater to those needs. ICT and BPO, this is a sector that we don't talk about too much, but we know that because Mauritians are bilingual and because of the time zone Mauritius finds itself in, there is a lot of interest and activity that is happening. Recently, a company as large as Objectivity, which is a EU-based company, has set its foot here. It plans to conduct its operations in Mauritius uh, starting this year. Uh, Mauritius along with Rwanda and Kenya remain to be the preferred ICT BPO hubs in Africa for very good reason. I missed sugar but sugar as I said to you is a sector that also has sustained for a very long time. It has been the, the backbone of the Mauritian economy pre-independence and post-independence and the industry has always evolved in line with the needs of the, of the markets. Today, cost of operations is higher and there's a lot of competition from the likes of Brazil, but Mauritians have been very astute in reforming their sugar sector. And today we have, we have a lot of value added sugars plus the production of ethanol. The recently concluded a free trade agreement with China is also very helpful because that now includes the export of these value added sugars to China without any trade barriers. It is our belief that sugar industry will continue in some form or the other, perhaps in a more evolved form, for the next two to two and a half decades. The last sector that I want to talk about is biosciences and biopharma. This has been put together in the recent budgets and there is a lot of impetus, a lot of facilitation from the state to invite companies to set up biopharma industry here. The last thing that, that also affects any businesses is the taxation regime. Taxation is one of the best proposals of Mauritius in terms of doing business. We follow a linear taxation regime 
it is aligned for the corporation tax as well as for per personal income tax and it's a very reasonable 15 percent there are no other hidden taxes there are no inheritance taxes there are no withholding taxes there are no taxes on capital gains and therefore not just the tax computation and tax optimization also the tax administration is very easy in Mauritius yes there have been certain levies due to the pandemic but they are what they are they are levies and it is our held view that these levies will be removed once the situation is more regular uh, we continue to believe in Mauritius uh, in its economic story uh, the last 45 50 years of Mauritius setting itself as a very viable investment destination is testament to how the state and the private sector come together and make it a very interesting investment journey. Thank you.